Empty, boring, dirty, old, and sad. In a branding survey completed at the end of 2014, this is what people had to say about downtown Utica. <gasps> maybe it's because it was kind of cold and snowy and dreary as it gets here sometimes, but maybe it's because people have been feeling the weight of a downturn for decades. In Rust Belt cities, once urban cores of American pride, there's been a heavy, heavy sense of hopelessness. But a lot of those cities are starting to turn around. So let me introduce you to Utica, New York. We're located in the center of the state in Oneida County, down in the southeast corner. We're made up of about 16 and 3 quarter square miles, and our population hovers at just under 62,000. If you look at our population increase and decrease since about 1900, you'll see that right now we're at about 40% of our highest point way back in 1930 when we were just under 102,000. The 1970s through the 2000s were our time of great decline. During those decades, as manufacturing moved out, companies moved out, people moved out, and our downtown got abandoned, that right there is where we lost our fight, and that is what still lingers with us. One thing about our population that has helped it from plummeting even more is our refugee and immigrant population. 17.6% of Uticans are foreign-born. Did you know that? And they're coming to us from all over the world, from Eastern Europe, Africa, Middle East, everywhere, making our population one of the most diverse in New York State. So that's Utica. In a, in a very quick, quick nutshell, that's Utica. Our story isn't that special. Lots of cities have it. And we're certainly, certainly not alone. Across the Rust Belt, cities like Detroit, Pittsburgh, Gary, Indiana, Cleveland, Ohio, and our own Buffalo have seen similar decline and strife, some losing huge percentages of their population, just like us. But if you look at what they're doing now, you'll see that everybody from their mayor on down to everyday folks, they're starting to take ownership, and they're starting to get the fight back in them, and they're helping their cities make a comeback. So where does it leave, where does, where does Utica fit into the city, the, the stories of these cities? How do we make our comeback? Some of the best movement is happening in our neighborhoods, and we're starting to heal from within. I want to talk to you tonight about how we're microbranding small districts of Utica, how we do it, and what it means to the inevitable resurgence of our city. So branding quickly, like the, the five second explanation of branding, is uncovering the essence. It's the intangible benefit that a company, a nonprofit organization, a city, even a neighborhood has to offer. Branding gives you consistency. When it's done right, it really helps you get excited. It's more than just a logo, it's the feeling, it's what we deliver. We're calling the work that we're doing in the neighborhoods micro-branding because literally it's kind of a geography thing. We're talking about small one-mile areas in comparison to our 16, point, 16 and three-quarter square miles that we have. One-mile areas that if given a strong identity and a brand to grow with can really start helping put Utica on the map. So I'm gonna talk about two neighborhoods. The first is Bag Square, one mile wide by only a quarter mile deep. And we're situated right in between downtown and Harbor Point in North Utica. This is the oldest neighborhood in the city. Literally, Utica started here. The name Utica was pulled out of a hat in the tavern of Bags Hotel right here in Bags Square. <laughs> True story. Today, it's home to Utica Memorial Auditorium, which is home to our beloved Utica Comets. Woo! <laughs> The beautiful 101-year-old Union Station, which is ranked one of the most beautiful train stations in the country. I know. And Lower Genesee Street, an up-and-coming mixed-use destination that's also on the National Register for Historic Places. The next neighborhood is downtown. Again, only about a mile wide from Oneida Square up to Franklin Square and bordered on the west side by the, by the arterial and the east side by Park Avenue. Much more dense than Bag Square, downtown is really the city's hub for government, 
offices, finance, and arts and culture. So this is our home of the Stanley Center for the Arts, Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute, our beautiful Utica Public Library, nearly 30 restaurants. Actually, maybe we tipped 30 with the announcement that we had uh, earlier this week. Yeah. And hundreds of businesses, some that have called downtown home for nearly 100 years. So we embarked on a branding initiative for each of these neighborhoods. The first step was to talk to the stakeholders. So we interviewed between 20 and 30 people in each neighborhood to really get the feel for what the neighborhood was, what the current state was of the neighborhood. What the assets were, what some of the issues, uh, what some of the issues that the business owners had, and really because it's a branding survey, we wanted to really hone in on how they were feeling and how they perceive the public is feeling about these neighborhoods. So during this first stage, it's really important to talk to as many people as possible. We preferably do it in person so we get to go meet them, and we really try to get a good cross-section of people. So you're talking to those folks who've had businesses there for almost 100 years, down to the person who might have just moved their bakery in there a couple weeks ago. And even there's some people that might not have a physical stake in the neighborhoods anymore, but they've put over the years a good deal of sweat equity in them, and they have this great emotional connection and this great history to share for it. This first step is really important because it gets the stakeholders an opportunity to get all the details of the project firsthand. It gets buy-in, it gets them on your side, and most importantly, it allows them to be heard. The second thing we do is public surveys. So we do online surveys, send it out through social media and traditional media, and we let the public give us what they think. And when you give the public a bunch of open-ended questions on a survey, they darn sure tell you what they think. <laughs> There are things I cannot say on this stage. <laughs> but we had tremendous success with these. We had just over 500 responses in Bag Square, and over in downtown, we had 860 responses. So great. We had pages and pages of feedback, really good stuff. At this point, the media became a really tremendous partner and has remained as such. And that's another great relationship to have when you're place branding for a multitude of reasons. It allows the flow of communication to kind of go easier. It helps you reach more people than you can reach on your own. And it really helps get the word out quickly. So I really thank the local media for helping us out with all of this. The last piece was doing a branding session with the mayor and his leadership staff. And I know there's a couple staff in the audience tonight, so. <laughs> getting those guys out of their element and getting them into a room. You know, we're talking the chief of police, engineering, urban and economic development, urban planning, parks and rec there was a representative from, and getting them in a room and asking them these strange branding questions like, if these neighborhoods were a person, what would they be like? <laughs> and it certainly, it certainly raised some eyebrows, but asking questions like that and having the conversations around those, and, and it really helps uh, kind of hone in on what the city's persona is. So the essence of the brand really lies at the intersection of our stakeholders. So we've got the public, we've got the building and business owners, and we have the government officials. So you can see here what lies in the intersection of these three audiences. Above all else, we would like our neighborhoods to be walkable and vibrant. Not too much to ask, right? Before we get there, though, we have got a lot of work to do. Well, each of the aud these audiences gave us words like those, you know, abandoned, desolate, sad, dirty, sad, all these ty types of words. There was also some words in there that were gems, like improving, progressing, getting there. That was one of my favorites. And, <laughs> and changing. That came up quite a bit. So that's really where we pulled the essence out of. That's where we pulled the brand, and that's where we really got going. So each of these two neighborhoods received a new logo, a slogan, a inaugural campaign, and really just an overall general brand platform. So it dictates you know, what these marketing materials look like, how it sounds, the tone of voice, how we say things, you know, down to the imagery, colors, all of that stuff, all compiled. You know, all with the intent of educating the public as to where these places were, what they had to offer, and how they're helping make a difference in the city. Bag Square's brand revolves around history and how we're breathing new life into Utica's oldest neighborhood. 
The slogan we adopted is always making history. Indeed, always making history. From 1790, when our namesake Moses Bag decided to come to this area, he set up a blacksmith shop and the first two room wooden structure that was really Utica's first hotel later became the infamous Bags Hotel. All the way up to 2013, with the historic return of the Utica Comets. Feel free to cheer again. <laughs> and Bag Square is also the first neighborhood to offer true loft apartment living, which are now at 100% capacity. We're bringing the brand to life through streetscape design, through our neighborhood events, and through marketing like our recent check stuffer campaign, which goes into your checks in the restaurants. And on the back of each, there's 12 interesting, cool uh, little historic tidbits. And on the other side is all of our new uh, social media and contact information. And we do use social media and our Facebook page as our main mode of communication. So I know Ryan earlier told you guys you don't have to put your phones away. So if you want to look up Bag Square and just like it, you know, real quick, I won't even be mad. That'd be cool. So we, we try to put out great stuff. You know, collaborative marketing, like you can see here, spend a Saturday in Bag Square, and there's all the things that you can do. You can spend an entire morning in Bag Square and get a lot of stuff done. You know, down to we're pushing out history facts and, and other great things that are happening. We are even branding our trash cans. <laughs> You, de you definitely have to go down and see these. I promise you'll never spend more time with a garbage can in your life. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Next door in downtown, the brand initiative unveiled a brand mantra of authentic, urban, bold, cultural, and changing. And the first campaign out of the gate is get to know a new downtown an effort to start changing people's perceptions on what downtown is and what it has to offer. We have so much to offer down there. It's a push to educate people too on the new project. So, you know, there's lots of rumors going around, but we're trying to get all the education out there as to what exactly is going on. The day after we unveiled the new brand, we started the Facebook page because that's a nice, quick and easy way to, you know, and free way to get out some of the, uh, communications, and in a day, we got about 1,200 likes. So we figured we better get to work real quick. So next week will actually be the six-month anniversary of the Downtown Utica Facebook page, and as of this morning, we've reached over 637,000 people off of the page with uh, 3,600 likes, about 500 posts. So it's doing excellent. Again, please go, please go like it. Thank you. <laughs> We post a top five Tuesday every week, and it's top five things that you should know about different businesses. Notice that verbiage. It's not just 10 things to know about Fort Schuyler Club. It's 10 things you should know about Fort Schuyler Club, because going back to bold, authentic, all that stuff, we're putting it on you. So these are great. We've done 24 of these so far. They reach tons of people. We have them booked for months. And it gives the downtown businesses really a chance to get their message in front of thousands of people. In early July, we launched our Downtown Utica banner campaign, which features 31 people who live, work, or have businesses in downtown. One of the things that came out of our branding survey downtown when we asked what the biggest assets there were, were was the architecture. And while our architecture is stunning, absolutely beautiful, cannot be replicated, the color scheme of it is kind of monotonous. It's a lot of browns and grays. Going back to the intersection of where we want our neighborhoods to go, being vibrant and walkable, these banners answer both of those questions. The color scheme that we put together for the downtown brand is bright. You've got yellows and oranges and blues, and they make a nice pop of color off of the, um, off of the architecture. And again, as you walk down, it kind of invites you to walk up and down Genesee Street to check, check out these 31 banners. It has the person's name, and a little bit about them, a little kind of personality. And this guy here, just a quick sidebar story, RJ works for Black River Systems at the Busy Corner. All of his family, though, is from Rome. They had never been to Utica for dinner until RJ went on a banner. So <laughs> I hope they come back. But you know, one, one little banner, I think he, you know, I, I heard that like 16 people came in and had dinner at Griffin's and they were taking pictures next to the banner and everything. <laughs> And I mean, that made a huge impact to a family from Rome to come to Utica for the first time for dinner. And again, really, I hope they come back. It's an awesome story. <laughs> 
So we have these two neighborhoods, and they're really making great strides, but there's still you know, a, a, a ton of work. We can be working on this really 24-7. Typically, when a city rebrands or establishes a brand, they do it for the entire city. So taking small sections of the city like this and, and kind of working inside out is uh, really a unique strategy. It's kind of different, but it's really working for us. I'm not quite sure that the city as a whole is ready to hone in on one particular brand just yet. We're very close, but we're at the infancy of a great resurgence, and the city is going to look really different in a couple of years. So, you know, and branding doesn't work in a bubble either. You know, we can't go out and say, do this multimedia campaign and do billboards and do radio and all this messaging and say, come to our vibrant, walkable, beautiful downtown. And then when they get here, our visitors are not going to experience that vibrant, walkable downtown yet. We will get there as we keep the momentum going. But right now, what we need to concentrate on is getting everybody on the same page. Anyone that works on behalf of the city Anyone who's out there, from myself to the mayor's staff to the guys from Parks and Rec and DPW who are taking care of these banners, to the media, to the business owners, everyone has to be talking the same language. Everybody has to be on the same page. So that's really where we're at. And the other thing is, we have a lot of healing to do. Uticans have been bitter, hurt, sad, self-deprecating. You've seen the bumper stickers. You know what's going on. <laughs> and negative, you know, not all Uticans, I know nobody in this room falls into that category, right? But you know the negativity is out there. And that's a lot of damage to undo, and that is a lot of minds to change. I, re <laughs> I really liken the whole branding process and implementation to truly, you know, after working on this for a year and a half, I really see it. It's kind of truly healing from within, healing mile by mile. So we ask in the branding sessions, what would these neighborhoods be like if they were people, right? So let's do a little branding session here. Everybody kind of close your eyes. Get downtown Utica. Driving there down John C Street, getting some hummus, going past the Stanley. You there? All right, now, if downtown Utica was a person, what kind of person do you see it as? What do they look like? Stop laughing. No. <laughs> Good, you got it? You guys got to share with me later what you're thinking. I'd love to know. But this is my take on it. It's a, a person that has carried such a load and had such a big issue for like so, so long. Really? What, what does a person like that feel like? You know, they lost their jobs. Their friends and their kids moved away because they couldn't find jobs. This person stops taking care of themselves. They fall into like a deep depression. They sit around and reminisce about how great they used to be, right? <laughs> That's what we do. And I wonder if they'll ever regain that former glory. We've been like that person who's sitting on the couch, eating chips, watching Lifetime movies. We, honestly, we are wallowing in self-pity. It's crazy. But you know, a person like that, you know, one day, a person like that or a city like us kind of stands up and takes a good, long, hard look in the mirror and says, you know what, enough is enough. Today is the day I'm going to take my life back. And that's where we're at, Utica. We have to help Utica take its life back. We have to start caring for it again. You know who's helping us start caring for it again? These guys are. <laughs> and what do you see here? Utica, 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 Utica. These homegrown brands are really starting to change people's perceptions of the city. And what, is, what do they have in common? It's the people behind these, right? It's the people making the difference. It's the people investing in downtown's neighborhoods. It's the people giving Utica a chance. While the mayor, our government officials, our economic development agencies, our business owners, while they're doing their work, we can get to work on the ground. You can be the person that takes a project or who starts helping Utica turn around, and you can hold others accountable to do the same. Take a look at yourself in the mirror later and say, you know, how can I help Utica? How can I help it come back? I want to introduce you to a few folks. This is Tom Nardone. He lives in Detroit, and he started the Mower Gang. 
So Tom's now got like two dozen friends. <laughs> that one mower's from like, I think 1985. But <laughs> he's great. This is a great story though. He noticed that, you know, they call themselves renegade landscapers, which is so cool. And they noticed that public parks and playgrounds were not getting mowed. So they go out, they have a great time, they get together, they mow these public places and take care of them for the kids, and they get involved in such events as the Motown Mowdown. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Black Bottom LLC started with two 20-something African-American women and is now a strong core of about a dozen. They started a website, a podcast, a magazine, and a directory of black-owned businesses, all in an effort to share the story of the historic Black Bottom neighborhood and to spur new energy there. Going down south a little to West Palm Beach, Florida, they wanted a Trader Joe's in their downtown so bad that they started this video campaign called What Would You Trade for Trader Joe's? <laughs> and you should see the things that they would trade. They'd trade anything from their dancing shoes to a yacht that wasn't even theirs to the name of the city in order to get this Trader Joe's. So because they got creative and because they band together, guess where Trader Joe's went? Downtown West Palm Beach. We should do that. <laughs> I think I heard a volunteer. <laughs> so coming back up here to upstate New York in Schenectady, Kelly Marr was tired of people being down on her city and saying negative things. So she started the popular Schenectady Doesn't Suck <laughs> Instagram account. And she shares the beauty and the, and the passion and all of the events and great things that are going on to Schenect in Schenectady on her Instagram account to thousands of people every day. So please go give her a like too. She's doing a great job. Back in Utica, we've got amazing people doing things too. Yeah. <laughs> This is Mike Ballman. He's the pastor at Cornerstone Community Church in Oneida Square, and he's the founder of the Oneida Square Project, which, a little sidebar, is a social enterprise that was just started that help, employs people with barriers to employment, and they have been the ones behind the fabrication of all of the beautiful litter, litter receptacles that you've been seeing around town. So they made our bag square ones, all the ones in downtown. And of course, you guys know Robin. Woo! Yes. <laughs> I, call, I keep calling Robin a serial entrepreneur, and she doesn't like that because it sounds, she says it sounds like an ex murderer. But she's, she's been doing these great, I mean, for decades, she's had these wonderful um, businesses downtown, and Robin is like an engine. She just keeps going and going, and we love her. This is Jerry Loomis from the Elfin Society of Utica. Him and a group of retired GE engineers have adopted the Bag Commemorative Park in Bag Square for the past few years. This is like their second home. They can, again, they're retired, they kind of hang out, they're, they're wonderful. They go down there and do a lot of um, electrical work for us. They do the groundskeeping. So next time you're down there enjoying the park, just know that there's a, a group of guys behind it who's taking care of that for you. I think they use, <laughs> I think they use it as their man cave. I gotta go check up on them. I don't know. There's a great basement in there. <laughs> Made in Utica. <laughs> this is a crazy collective of creatives doing amazing things. They're taking on different projects that really help, um, you know, instill an environment of pride in Utica. From their Utica Passport program down to lip sync battles at Saranac Thursday and all this cool stuff, they bring it. They bring fun, they bring excitement, and apparently costumes and beer to everything that they do. So thanks, guys. And Rick Short, who's here in the audience, and his lovely wife, Wendy. <laughs> Rick doesn't even live in Utica, but he loves Utica. And for years, he has been promoting and promoting. He supports us in all that we do with his popular hashtag, Utica Rocks. So we've got great people, and we've got great hashtags. So these seemingly small gestures that everyday people are doing are really making an immense difference. They are part of the brand as well. They are recreating the experiences that people have with Utica. So no, as you as an individual, you are also part of the brand. Everything that you say, the conversations that you say, the things that you post, that you tweet, that you put out there, 
is all part of the brand. So let me share this. This is pretty exciting. For this talk, I wanted to see if all this stuff was working. You know, if all of the branding that we've been doing and the marketing we've been putting out, if all of the new downtown development that's happening, you know, all of the great news that the media has been putting out, I wanted to see if it was working, if pe people's minds were starting to change. So again, you're going back to November, December when we did a branding survey and people said that downtown Utica was empty, boring, dirty, sad, and old. You know, forget that, right? So now when we ask, what are you most excited about? This is what they say. All right, right? Awesome. It's a, it's a small sampling, but it just show, it goes to prove that really minds are changing, people are feeling a different vibe. I hear it again and again. If I hear the word palpable one more time this week, that's like, that's gotta get in our words. Every, everybody says palpable. It's a good word, palpable. <laughs> so these words, are turning into these words. That hopelessness that has plagued us for decades is finally lifting. And there is no better time to be engaged in a city than it's at the time of its resurgence. And we get to be right in the middle of it all. We are the ones who get to do this. We're gonna look back in years and say, we were there, we helped, we did it, we brought Utica back. I mean, how awesome is that? What a responsibility that is for us, right? We can do it. Our next steps are gonna be critical. There's gonna be some quick wins. There's gonna be some things that take time. Other things are gonna take a lot of time. Nano took a lot of time, but look where diligence got us. Have patience, but be persistent where you need to be. Be dedicated to keeping in the know, to keeping yourself educated, to keeping like, on top of what's going on. And when you hear somebody complaining about Utica, about a project, about an initiative, about anything that we're doing, educate them, give them the facts, or totally shut them down. Like whatever the occasion calls for, you do it. Remember, one of our pieces of our brand mantra is to be bold. So you guys be as bold as you need to be when someone is talking smack about Utica, New York. <laughs> <laughs> and all of you, get involved in some way. It can be tiny. The next time you decide to go out to dinner, choose a downtown restaurant. Take a Saturday morning and go stroll Bag Square, learn about the history, take in the neighborhood. Engage with us on social media. Share things out, show people that you support us. You know, be proud. Or you can get even more involved. If you have time and passion, Get involved with one of the neighborhood groups. There's a strong one going on in Bag Square and there's one going on in downtown as well. Come join us. Hit the ground running, start an event. You know, just do something. I, I shared all of these folks. If you have a lawnmower, like mow something. I don't know, you know. <laughs> whatever you've got, whatever your thing is, take a, take a grassroots project in one of our neighborhoods and, and really knock it out of the park. So Utica, New York can be such a great story of how a small city makes this enormous comeback. And we can do it together, mile by mile, one square block by one square block. Thank you.